Hello, everybody. Me, Mudahar. Welcome to Some Ordinary Podcast, Episode 4. We're cranking out these cringe hours every single week. I've got my good old friends, Nuxtaku and Oompaville. Introduce yourselves, boys. Yo! Hey. And uh, beyond our usual trio, we've got ourselves one important guest over here, Hassan Piker, also known as Hassan Abi, over on Twitch. Feel free to introduce yourself, friend. What's going on, everybody? <clears throat> I, I don't know why I'm uh, supposedly controversial. I don't know. I mean, especially after last episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. La comments. Last week, Hassan, you we we uh we we were almost not going to have you this week because we were notified that you were an infamous racist over on. Twitter. I was offended. Yeah. I was offended too. Being for a white person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did the worst crime you can do: anti-white racism oh, on the yeah. internet. The worst crime you can do is that. I remember the only reason I ever knew about that was like, so my interaction with Hassan is literally like, we don't even talk about politics. It's literally like, oh, financial shit. Let's talk about financial stuff. That's it. So when my entire Twitter yeah. feed was fucking hijacked by Twitch racism, I was like, wait, what's going on today? What happened? And then I see the clip and I'm like, ah, what a damnable offense. Jesus. Maybe this will be controversial for you guys, but like racism can be funny. Especially if it's conducted by those that are from their the race of the people that they're making fun of. Okay, mm -hmm. like everybody loves Dave Chappelle. It's racial humor to a T, yep. right? Especially old Chappelle, not the new Chappelle. He's kind of washed now. I haven't seen you his know? new special, oh, so I don't even know whatever. what the fuck Dave Chappelle's on about. Yeah. Re regardless, like he's he's great, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that like the very same people who uh, for such a long time were making the argument that like you should be able to make whatever kind of jokes you want to make. What the fuck have now been like, oh, well, if we can't make any jokes, then you can't either. Like you can't even say a cracker. Well, then you're fucking yourself. You're literally just like eliminating slowly but surely every little thing that you can say on the Internet. Like you started off the conversation with like the slippery slope of, of free speech. And now we are unironically getting to a point where it's like Twitch is going to ban me for seven days for saying fucking redneck or Karen or something. You know what I mean? And that's like insane. I'm pretty sure Twitch just bans any racial slur yeah. regardless of where it comes from. So would you just... Yeah. Would you say it's not a racial slur regardless of whether you are that race? No, I, I do. I do think it's a it's a racial slur for sure. By but definition. Not, yeah. Yeah, but it's not... It's not equal. You know what I mean? Like yeah, Caleb right. isn't, I don't think, or maybe I don't want to speak for Caleb. <laughs> I don't think Caleb thinks I'm like a, like a savage anti-white racist. You know what I mean? I mean, that's like, what I thought I until I started talking I think you're offending the 5% of me that is white. <laughs> I was afraid. The five I was afraid to get hate The 5% of my genetic heritage that is white was offended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although that said, Twitch, Twitch should have, um, you know, they should have stood their ground. They should have banned you again. Yeah, they, they should have. They should have fucking. They should have dropped the <laughs> yeah. seven day. Mark. Like if, if it's a should've if it's a bannable down. offense, they should just ban you every single time. Yeah, they should just that, like, permanently. Being honest here, were you trying to bait one more out? Like when you came back that week, were you literally trying to bait it out, or was it just like you were reading it and like, you know? No, I wasn't trying to get banned. No, no, no. The thing is, like, obviously, I talked to them. And the thing, the reason why I got banned was because I called someone a cracker. Okay. Like I called someone on Reddit, like a comment I was reading. Oh. A cracker. So it was like a so harassment like, thing. So that, that is like directionally using it as a slur against someone like it, that was the reason. Oh, so you could, you, you could have just said it for no reason. You could have just said it if it was a general term, like you could have just been like, ah, those. Yeah. You can talk about the etymology of words. Okay. You can have discussions about the words. Uh, that's all fine. They basically, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they basically hey, that said that as well. <laughs> and that, and that's the thing. Like, I, I have these conversations regularly. You know what I mean? And I've, and I've, ironically, I have one called people crackers before, and it wasn't a big deal. Obviously, I mean, you've also said retarded, so I mean, it happens. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that, exactly right. Like, exactly, yeah. which is not a bannable offense on Twitch. Actually, they, really? just, they promote not. you. I, is it? Wait, is that? <laughs> wait, 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 that's <laughs> not bannable. Tara, is that is, is that bannable on YouTube? Wait. Yes, dude. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait. No, how fucking Simp nuts is, is bannable? That? It's not bannable on YouTube. I let it slip sometimes. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I'm just like, oh, oh, and then I say it, and I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. You know, it, it comes out every now and then. It's, it's not even in my like vernacular on a on a normal experience like off camera either but sometimes just 
some dudes are just so stupid that like idiot doesn't cut it. You gotta you know go I mean? a little deeper. Gotta get your I money have so out. many videos from back in like 2016, 2015, where to this day I get Twitter DMs all the time. It's like you use the R word. I'm like, I can't believe I'm like I'm like, all right, calm down. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, when was the video? It's your fault for having well, DMs open up. Well, I, well, I keep saying, I'm like, can you send me the link to the video where I said it? Because I'm like, I'm sure I didn't say it at all in the last two years. I mean, now I did. But like, in the last two years, I haven't used that word at all. And they link a video from like 2014. I'm like, all right, stop being fucking retarded. Of course, everyone used that word back in the day. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no. It's like, dude, the, the further back you go, the worse the words. Oh, yeah. Get. Okay, come on. Like, chill. It's like, just because you were like seven years old in fucking 2016 doesn't change the reality that like you know language evolves this is a concept that i personally understand okay uh especially when it comes to ableism ableism is like a very interesting one because like before that it was idiot that was the the, the less acceptable term and then they were and then people started using the r word as a as a way to like use that and now it's like lame and all that other stuff that out with idiot but now idiots back in fashion and and the r word is out like i mean Black Eyed Peas had a literal fucking song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I listened exactly. to it. It's in my playlist. Every time yeah. I get in my car, that song so, comes actually. <laughs> no, but like just looking at YouTube, it's crazy. Like iDubs was like everyone loved his content back in the day, 2016. And I've seen one of your reactions to one of his videos, Hassan. And you pause the video every four seconds and say trigger warning. <laughs> so iDubs is I love iDubs. Like I, I I am a fan of his content. I think he's made like great videos, but the the i definitely had a disagreement with him on you should be able to say all the words you know what mm -hmm. i mean like i i personally have always been anti that because i do think that there are some words you should, just should not say like when you're pewdiepie playing PUBG on a bridge you know you get into a little gay room <laughs> yes. moment. the most infamous you know, obviously it's not as bad as the word cracker which i used so loosely yeah. but you know it's it's still pretty bad like that's no that's, i i, I, I agree when that pewdiepie that. moment happened i was a little floored i was like wait wait you hit the record on the obs and you still went through with this shit yeah. <laughs> yeah dude yeah i saw that i was i was pretty surprised i was like man yeah. I was and, wait did youtube that, give him yeah. a strike for that uh i, I think, think the so. world did no no <laughs> but like that doesn't matter we people forget dude youtube gave us all fucking strikes that caused the apocalypse yeah but like i'm saying <laughs> if youtube didn't give him a strike for that what is truly the superior streaming platform then right like come on now if you can you can Although, be free. Like, think, YouTube, <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, YouTube doesn't give strikes for slurs. I don't think YouTube gives strikes for slurs. Idub's video is. I think still they do for hate oh, they, they do. No, they do. They demonetize. So right, they they demonetize the live stream that you're you have done. But that's it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you don't get a strike. I like, but I don't know sometimes with like YouTube or really anything because when I upload videos, like any video at all, even if it like the word, like even if like there's an offensive word on the screen and I'm not saying it, I still have to like. All right, fucking where's the blur tool? Get rid of it. Fucking get it. Like, Jesus Christ. Obviously, it's just like yeah. every other TOS where it's, it's extremely vague. They remove hate speech is not allowed on YouTube. We remove content promoting violence or hatred against individuals, groups based on age, caste, disability, ethnicity, et cetera. So, like, so I'm sure it could be, it could fall under that umbrella and they could either age restrict, yeah, demonetize, I feel like or YouTube, strike. YouTube has the umbrella so wide so that if they ever want to ban anyone, they could be like, okay, yeah. so uh, these three are harassment, three strikes, you're out. Yeah, like, they give themselves I feel like they power. did that to Leafy, for example. Like, I think that's how they, they just wanted him gone, so they were like, oh, these three videos were bullying. But like, come on, he did upload like six image, six thumbnails of Pokemon. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, he was... I'm not saying he wasn't, yeah, there's you know, no person who deserved it. He was like fondling him, sure. YouTube's balls. Was like, he was definitely poking the bear. But YouTube just yeah. wanted yeah. him gone and just... Um, you know the thing, YouTube. like the thing with YouTube in general is like fucking. There are so many people I know, of, like guys that I talk to, that do like TikTok content. So some people like they get into the political sphere where they talk about like the COVID nineteen vaccine, and like Ooh, if, politics. No, cringe. I don't know anyone that talks politics online. Yeah, what the fuck? Ew, uh, dude. I thought we were here to be racist. Well, I mean, Hassan, we're all gamers here. So <laughs> come on. it was like, dude, be as anti white as you want, dude. I I hate white people. That's what he said. My channel is some ordinary gamers. According to the broad <laughs> perspective, you're allowed to be as free speech racist as you can. That's what gamers are like, right? That's what I heard. So feel free. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what that's the environment yeah. I grew up in. Was like, you know, the 2016 era when we talk about that. Like that was kind of how it was, and that's changed a lot. And the reason why I think that that has changed a lot is because I think there were plenty of fucking gamers who were just like, I'm not like a racist person. I don't really get it. But all the essayists out there are just like pumping out the same kind of content. And 
I mean, it's cool. I like to make jokes, you know? Maybe you were like, I don't really chill with the Xbox lobby vibes, but... Those lobby vibes are still there, man. Come on. I've, I just... <laughs> no, 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 for sure. But I think that is definitely changing. Like, a lot of the essayists, a lot of the people in the space have become, I think, more understanding, more accepting. It's not like people fucking going, ah, whenever they see a, a woman on screen as much as it, it used to be. Uh, it's like it's slow, tough, but man. But like, I, I, dude, I like, I watch a lot of content. Caleb was like, nah, fuck <laughs> that. Look at his face. He's like, nah, dude, woman, see what? Women? He was like, what? That exists? <laughs> Are you kidding me? There's they no women in my town. They don't let women next to his house. Yeah, actually, they don't. They don't. He, lives in a, he lives literally by a cult that has like, it's like fucking Saudi Arabia They grow there. seeds and sell them. It's like Riyadh out there oh, for women. It's fucking... They wear robes pretty scary oh dude don't get yeah. murdered what the no, he's okay. he's dude. He's their dude. acronym is only three letters wrong i'll let you figure out what they are you might get along with them oh yeah you might get robe. along with them real well no no no. <laughs> this is a this is a brown robe this is a brown robe oh. and it's and it's there's no point it looks like a burlap sack that they wear and they walk around oh that's so gnarly it's really i can't wait God. till the day it comes out in the news that you're like actually fucking destroyed out there like you live that dangerously <laughs> close to them it's fucking insanity but yeah the whole woman thing though dude yeah. like you say that but like there's so many like culture war channels that i watch where it's like every time a woman shows up in a movie they're like fucking unbearable unfucking watchable i can't like matrix 4 came out yeah this movie was shit okay i'll be real i watched this movie the day it yeah. came out there's so many motherfuckers on Twitter. I literally said this movie sucked ass. And the guys were like, well, we don't need opinions from a YouTuber. I'm like, listen, I watched this movie. It like barely it puts me to sleep. OK, like it was a, it was a shit movie. And, and yeah. like there's so many people. It's like fucking they're trying to defend this garbage. And you go to the culture war channels and they're like, oh, I can't believe Trinity. The woman is able to fly now instead of Neo, the man. And I'm like. Well, spoilers, bro. Yeah, but I'm, I'm <laughs> dude. I'm, <laughs> I plan on watching. Listen, it. listen, Caleb. We know you weren't gonna fucking watch it. We know if you were gonna watch this movie, you were gonna laugh at every scene imaginable. There are so many fucking enjoyably <laughs> dumb scenes in this entire movie, and so I'm watching it. I'm like, guys, there's nothing politically about this movie that I it strikes to me. It's just boring, you know. Is there a pill dilemma in this one, dude? It's yeah. It's it's. There, well, he gets to he like chomps on blue pills like fucking Vicodin or some shit. I don't know. Like he's just enjoying it. Viagra. No. Oh. It's no, it's not like Keanu was definitely not at his peak performing on this fucking movie. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, it, it was whatever. Like nobody wanted another Matrix. I'll be honest. Like <laughs> it's like after the second or third movie, no one gives a shit. And then they, they come out with a Honestly, fourth after one. After the first movie. <sighs> I mean, I, I don't think it's the second coming of Christ, but you know. I think all movies suck now. It's just like everything sucks. I wish there was better. I wish there were better movies. What's some of your favorite movies, Hassan? Come at us with this. I just rewatched Uncut Gems last night. It's so that movie, good. that movie, movie was such an anxiety I, fucking trip. <laughs> I have a link on my bookmark bar that literally just goes to a clip on YouTube of him saying, "I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come." <laughs> yeah, right there, it's in chat. So that like it's that, in chat. I just no, that I, movie was really good. Uncut. Safety Brothers are fucking incredible. They're yeah. really good directors. But the thing is, like, God, I sound. Like <laughs> I only like A24 movies. But like, but like literally, just like everything fucking sucks. Look, here's the thing, okay? And this is if for those of you in your audience that don't know me at all. Like, this is I think my big difference from what they think I represent versus who I actually am and what I believe in. Like, I fucking shit on liberals a lot. I think that rad libs are really fucking annoying, and they constantly want to police culture and they constantly want to police like what fucking movies are made or whatever. And I, and I do think that it has like a negative, uh, I think it has a negative consequence, but the real reason why uh, that negative consequence sticks is because corporations, capitalist corporations that want to make as much money as possible respond to whatever the fuck they see on Twitter and go, okay, we're just going to make a movie that only has good characters and only promotes good values or whatever the fuck. And the bad people are going to be bad. And it's like, no, you can have like complex individuals that, are you know uh multifaceted because it's just how human beings are like i want to see a real reflection of the realities that we exist in and rather than you know some weird bullshit but i don't even think that's the only reason i think it's true like i i think that like argument is like i think that like point is that like that's like the perfect way to put it because like i do feel like most of the movies and like tv and shit that we even video games that we play now they're mostly just like it's either made by a fucking ai or it's made by somebody who spends way too much time getting their world view off of how social media is that's it yeah, yeah i think uh yeah. focus groups like with movies and stuff i don't understand how that's a thing that they have like like how will this appeal how can we make this appeal to the broadest audience possible and just completely dilute it of anything that 
any real person can relate to aside from just like like virtues and stuff like that which like you, most you can have good don't virtues that. You, you can have good right. virtues in a, in a show avatar mm-hmm. the last airbender is yeah, the exactly. prime example of this it literally has like representation for disabled people there's like you know lgbt characters you know what mm-hmm. i mean like it's anti-imperialist Are in there nature. Any LGBT it's the perfect fucking in, TV show. In and Avatar? a single dildo. I think so. It's Korra is one of them, right? Well, I think, yeah. yeah, Korra has LGBT. I think like in Avatar, they just, they do that thing in cartoons where they like kind of, they you mention know, it, but they don't mention I mean, it. There wasn't any that was like openly. You can yeah. figure it out if you. Yeah, but Avatar was great. I love it. That's my favorite show. Korra wasn't as good, but still. Was Never saw. Um, it was so bad. You guys watch all this anime good, and yeah. I don't. Protagonist was a girl. You guys watch all this anime Yo, and I'm like the only. I don't know if you're aware. He kind of. Dude, You're kind of no, giving me fucking weeb vibes. You just watched the first vibes. 12 episodes of JoJo. You have to be a massive weeb to watch 12 Wait, you watch of JoJo? JoJo? Of course you watch JoJo. Oh, oh my god, JoJo. dude. How do you cut? Oh, no. I can't I can't do anime. Like I can't The only anime that I can watch are like all the cyberpunky ones, like Ghost in the Shell and like all this shit. That's did about it. You watch it. a Psychopath movie? I did. I watched it on Netflix. That shit was like hooked me since the first episode it's so good have you guys seen duck dynasty <laughs> dude i actually love that show <laughs> i i remember my cousins like i was visiting them in new york and by the way they have no right to talk because you motherfuckers are watching keeping up with the kardashians unironically <laughs> like no one has any right to judge me they put on duck dynasty to laugh at dude i fucking love that show that is like i mean yeah it's reality tv is like it's is it fire. is like is if it wasn't it people wouldn't fucking mm-hmm. watch it you know american reality tv is yeah. the best export in the world i don't give a fuck it's the best culture that dynasty's awesome bro our brain cancer is what we what our cultural exports are are too powerful i think we're just like making the rest of the world bad like us okay listen we didn't make tiktok a son we didn't spread that to the world (laughs) i know but hey guess who doesn't have fucking tiktok china motherfucker you know what i mean like it's because they they literally were just like here take this no but did you see what they do to the you see what they do to the kids in china when they use tiktok so, like, if you're underage, yep. like, you literally are only allowed for an hour to use TikTok between, like, a certain amount. Like, you can't use it during school hours or at night, and you're only allowed to look at shit like museums and, like, cultural, like, oh, They, they treat TikTok so like it it's be. crack. Like, you know, the way they should. Um, although, did you see yeah. TikTok is the most visited site on the internet this year? Surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, the, like, I, I mentioned that in the video yesterday. I'm like, dude, it's it's literally only there because China just doesn't ban everything from the rest of the world in their country. China bans literally everyone outside operating there. Like, you know, Google can't run. And once a day, you can see someone die and a tip. So, Wait, really? Yeah. On TikTok. Really? Absolutely. I've seen people oh die. God. I've seen cartel videos. Oh, yeah, I've seen the cartel stuff. You are literally a power user. You are oh. literally oh, yeah. the reason why TikTok <laughs> is the fucking the number one pl- uh, app. Bro, that's the for like, you, you page, man. Scrolling. The for you, you page. have to be scrolling Ten. all the way Double to tap. the fucking No, bottom. no, Double Hassan, tap. you have no idea. Like, I watch the cartel shit that he does, and, like, all I get is, like, cartel yeah. death footage. Oh, I love that shit, too, by it's the way. Insane. I'm a big fan yeah. of the cartel shit. I'm a huge Dude, fan. it's like the wildest shit. Uh, like, not of the cartel, no, yeah. but like the cartel videos. The for you page, like the the TikTok algo, I think we all agree is crack, right? Like, mm-hmm. they just like took, they basically took like everything that was bad about like all the other platforms, algorithms, and like you know your the 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 fact that they like keep you on for as long as they yeah. possibly could, and they just put it on steroids. They unshackled it in its entirety. So now it's like if you even look in a certain direction, immediately it picks it up and is like. We're going to serve you this content. So yeah. I look at a variety of weird shit, right? I look at like a lot of conservative stuff on there. I look, a lot, I look at a lot of like weird shit on there. Like, um, you know, people who are, you know, there's like sex talk, like really cringe shit. You know what I mean? People mm-hmm. who are like, yeah, I'm your daddy or whatever. Like, really <laughs> what are you watching, shit. bro? I, I spent a lot of time at, on it's the deepest desires. I, I look at like really weird cringe shit. I love looking at like weirdos who are just like yeah, okay. expressing Same. themselves in the most cringe way possible, right? Yeah. And it's just I, I just have a fucked up brain. You know what's fucked up? How about this? I saw a kid in a full SS uniform. All right, and he was doing like some kind of dance like that. And it was a very normal kid looking very normal looking, little blonde, blue eyes a little blue. And in the bottom left, it said follows you. And I was like, oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> 
So he like he he knows who I am, follows my videos, oh and my is God. posting like legitimate just fucking culture well, dances. You, you guys know they're actually getting a class action lawsuit right now on TikTok because of that shit. Here, let me let me no, share. I did not. Let me, let me, let awesome me share now. you guys this fucking. I celebrate. That. I'm gonna share you guys this like one article. Who's getting TikTok, a lawsuit? Look at this one. So TikTok. I got this like little article. Oh, TikTok is extremely disturbing. TikTok sued by content moderator for psychological trauma. A TikTok moderator was asked for keeping harmful contact. You can see right here, Candy Fraser who works as a contracted content moderator, filed a class action lawsuit. And I just, I want to see, yeah, it's an actual suit. In federal court on Thursday against TikTok and his parent company for psychological trauma. She alleges that she developed anxiety, depression, PTSD as a result of 12-hour shifts where she watched streams of videos containing animal cruelty, oh my God. torture, <laughs> see? and other graphical oh. content. Some of them included conspiracy theories, that's a pretty broad term. It could be like flat earth and some serious shit. Political misinformation and other destabilizing content. See, like, I watch that stuff for fun. Yeah. The bottom stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that right there, that, that caused psychological trauma. I would pay money to have access to an app that shows me that stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like, I love that. That's extremely my shit, right? So, like, I watch that sort of stuff. But then the other part of the story was that I also look at, obviously, OnlyFans girls, right? So then TikTok, my For You page, decided to merge the two so now i get like only fans oh, hot girls girl cartel that, beheading like, huh? wear real tree camo <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen that girl wait what yes wait oh, wait, 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 wait 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 with the fishing trip Who? yes the fishing dude trip one? Currently, Atlas VPN is running a special holiday deal for the some ordinary podcast viewers in that right nux and muda I think I'm alone right now. Using the link in the description of this episode, you will get three months for free. Okay, click it. Support the podcast, and maybe we'll do more episodes. Maybe. Just kidding. We'll do a lot more. Thank you, Atlas VPN. And also, if you're wondering why you should use Atlas VPN, for one, it's one of the best VPN deals on the market. I personally use VPNs to get better deals with shopping and stuff, buying plane tickets. Like if you're in Canada, for example, and you make your location in the United States, your tickets will be cheaper. Why is that? I don't know, but Atlas VPN is a great way to get around it. Your connection will still be fast. A lot of VPNs kind of screw up your connection a little bit. Atlas VPN does not. It's available on both iPhones and Android. All right. And your PC, obviously. Click the link in the description to support the podcast and get access to Atlas VPN's special holiday deal. No, no, no. Who was it? Who Wait, was it? Who? I don't know what her name is. She gets banned like every yeah. week because she's like straight yeah. up up this girl okay brilliant by the way brilliant fucking marketing tactic she gets banned oh, all the man. time but it doesn't matter she literally will be like when a girl says you know the tiktok yeah, yeah. Was like when a girl tells you uh she wants to go out uh on a, on a fishing trip and then it's just her <laughs> getting fucked on the fishing trip but you don't actually see her getting fucked. It's you just close. Hear her head's oh bobbing God. it's close it's like close yeah, her head's bobbing yeah. on the boat and then she's like full video on my Twitter. And then you go to the Twitter. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I, a friend uh -huh, went uh -huh. to her Me. Twitter to uh -huh. find the video. Just pass that over. I'll fucking admit. I'll check it out for you guys. Shit. I know you got parental locks yeah. on your systems. I look. Yo, it's like that one <laughs> dude that uploads. And then the full porn is on our OnlyFans, which is brilliant. Like he uploads those like, weird like, Darman style videos that always end with people like having sex and it's like full video on my OnlyFans kind of thing. Oh, that's brilliant. Darman, but Darman, like, but horny. Like horny Darman, where the full porn is on their, you know, other oh, side. Oh, Darman. Let's do it. People, do, people, it. People, <laughs> people do that shit with Twitch sometimes. I remember I was watching like some girls who were like literally doing like wardrobe malfunctions just to get on LSF. And that was the ultimate. They would be like top view post of LSF. Like, girl, you're calling, you're calling out a lot of my coworkers right I'm, now. I'm I mean, look, look I, I'm <laughs> talking about infiltrators on Twitch. Okay, they're not your coworkers. They no, made an account. Yeah, they're like, no, I'm I fingering know. my asshole I mean, on I, you. <laughs> I personally think Amaranth is like the smartest person on Twitch. Yeah, oh, 100. She's a she, genius. She rarely. Yeah, she's a genius. She's a habitual line stepper, but she does not break the rules on purpose. Like, she knows exactly what the fuck. She knows the TOS inside and out. She's got like a legal degree in just terms of service <laughs> violations. She also streams. She's like like, reading that shit I respect that hustle, for like man. 10 she hours is. a day while she's doing ASMR. She's watching yeah, other crazy. videos on her own time and she's just sucking on impressive. some ears. Like, you gotta respect it. The grind, the brains, yeah. the link to her OnlyFans, downbad.com or whatever it's called. It's insane how about all of the yeah. Twitch shit that I always read. It's like, I think the best that I ever saw was during the Twitch leaks. And the reason I bring this up all the time is because like, so I, I do a lot of virus investigation shit anyway. So like when the Twitch leaks happen, I'm like looking through their code, like just, just to see, I'm like, oh, what got leaked? And everyone was focusing on, on the money earning shit on Twitch. And like, that was weird. Like Hassan, you weren't even like top 10, were you? And I don't know. I don't remember your exact position. No, I was, I was number 13 because I have like a shit contract 
So yeah, but you're the like, one taking all the shit for um, everybody. Like you took the shit for everyone. Like XQC didn't even get. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, of course, because I'm because he's a the socialist, socialist who fucking yeah. Socialist who makes money, which is illegal, of course. Yeah, how dare you uh, make they, any what money? What they how don't are you... realize is yeah. that out of all the millions he made on Twitch, he gave 90% of it to charities. He did. So I definitely did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely no. did not give 90% no. to charity. I was seeing Elon talk about fucking taxes the other week or whatever. Like, fucking, he had to pay oh like 11 God. billion or some shit. I'm like, damn, Elon, fuck. Out of yeah. 300 that you got sitting around in stock value, nice. Good shit, brother. Dude, dude, that that shit that shit pisses me off the most. Honestly, it's like Elon Musk, especially who like he is funny as fuck. Though uh, admit that has built a <laughs> so fucking funny. career. He, like Elon, start a business that does not rely on government subsidies. Challenge impossible difficulty from the solar panel business to the fucking uh, to obviously uh, uh, Tesla, I love my Tesla to SpaceX. <laughs> like, dude, listen, every single fucking <laughs> business that this motherfucker has started. And by the way, I don't, I don't have a problem with this. I think the government should be subsidizing green energy initiatives. So it like pains me to fucking say this all the time. But like, he's such a dickhead for constantly complaining about fucking taxes when like every single business that he has started is literally a business that the government is like, we are trying to get people to I engage I in this sector. Oh, shut up. You do not think Elon Musk Dude, is Elon Musk is hilarious. Dude, remember what he said to Bernie? Remember what he said to Bernie on he Twitter? Said to Bernie, oh, I keep forgetting you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good line. <laughs> That's like, it's like, it's funny because it's okay. unhinged. Come on now, let's be real. Or, He's an uh, <laughs> No, he just does like, yeah, he does nine gag memes, guys. He took he the red pill. The internet. Did you ever, did you, did you ever <laughs> see the video of him getting asked by somebody in a shareholder meeting where he's like, uh, can I be- Oh my God. Can I be, I Dude, would like to be the next uh, vice president of Tesla. Or like, I did, hate that video. Oh, it made me. I wait, fucking hate that video. You've never video. seen that? Wait, what did he Okay, do? so he say? there was this one shareholder meeting. It's oh. like, um, fucking, I don't know if I can link it right now, but like there's a shareholder meeting where like he just gets everyone involved, talks to him. This, he has an Iron Man moment. So this one guy comes up and like, he just, he asks Elon, it's like, so Elon, just before I leave, uh, I would like to have a executive position at Tesla. I would like to put myself out as next vice chairman of Tesla. And like Elon's face was like, oh, what? how the fuck do I respond to that shit? I mean, <laughs> you should have got to pull the Logan Paul. And no. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. Oh, Logan Paul. The Logan Paul video is like no, that. no. He's like yeah, where, where the fan comes up and he's like, I want to be, I want to work There's with somewhere. you, bro. Yeah. I love. Quit my job. Yeah, more sociopathic. Yeah, oh, every, to be for the record, I, I'm, I'm having Grimes on soon uh, this upcoming month. So, oh, you're gonna you know, get it. You're gonna get grind. a juicy Elon story out of that? Uh, maybe. maybe. But the thing is, dude, like, I, I obviously, I love EVs. Uh, I think that uh, I love renewable energy. I think that uh, the Green New Deal is great. I think that you know subsidies, like government, the government subsidizing, or at least like changing the money faucet away from the fossil fuel industry to a a massively uh, growing at a rapid clip sector like renewable energies is actually a good thing. And that kind of uh, incentive will absolutely create a, a, a robust platform for renewable energy uh, corporations. But having said that, like, pay the fucking taxes, dog. And also don't stand in opposition to any sort of, like, increase in capital gains or, or rather a new way to, uh, at the very least, like, try to tax some of these fucking billionaires that have a way, way lower effective tax rate than the average person including all of us, especially all of us, because we're in fucking YouTube. You know, if you're like a YouTuber or if you're an athlete, you're a Hollywood uh, a celebrity, like you're just getting, you're, you're paying mega taxes. You're paying High more margins. taxes than hey man, anyone else. My, my tax rate's like 52%. I can't fucking complain, man, shit. Oh, I live in California. I paid the same <laughs> exactly. taxes. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. yeah, which I don't have an issue with. Like, I want fucking roads to be built. You know what I'm saying? I want healthcare. Like, I, I want all these amenities that... Every other OECD nation. I mean, it's going to sound pretentious. I like, like it. When just... somebody taxes me, I'm like, whatever. I'm still rich at the end of the day, too. So fucking go for it. Shit. Exactly. That's like, what I mean. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe it's different because, like, I know that personally, without money or with money, I never really cared about, like, expanding my, like, fucking. Like, I, I don't live lavishly. You know, I have, like, a simple life. I wake up, scratch my balls, play some Mass Effect, make a video, and, like, do some of my stock work, and that's it. Same. Like, with, with the exception of this house that I'm in, which was, like, a massive fucking problem for everybody. Um, ridiculous. Did you buy the house for that, the like, drama, or did you buy the house for the house? Yeah, let's be honest. You didn't buy it just for the sake of living in West Hollywood. Did you, in your mind, you're like, yo, 
this is going to become a huge story. No, I'm that fucking stupid. I literally <laughs> bought it because my parents were. I literally bought it because my parents were ch uh, chirping me nonstop. I don't even have a credit card, and they're like, "What are you doing? Like, your money's just like sitting in your bank account. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you need to get a house. You need to get a house. Like, and they would come over, and they're here right now. I hope they can't hear me, but uh, they would they would come over and stay. And I was living in a fucking two bedroom apartment, so I lived with my mom uh, for the duration of COVID. Like, I moved into a two bedroom apartment so I could live with my mom. I brought her here. And at, by the end of it, like, I was just, like, losing my mind. I was like, oh, my God, there's, like, no fucking space. Like, we're living on top of one another. You know what I mean? And I, I was like, finally, I'm like, all right, sure. I'll look I wish out. they taught you that shit in school, and, man. I remember getting out of school yeah. and, like, fucking when they start introducing the concept of paying your taxes. And then you go to the entire thing and it's like, you got to have this piece of paper. You got to do this, this and that. And I'm like, man, I wish they yeah. I wish I had a whole class about that, man. Where They were teaching me bullshit, dude. They were teaching me how to speak French in college or not college, high school. Instead of paying my fucking. Uh oh, money. you're gonna you're gonna upset the francophones, Mudo. You better I don't watch give a out. Fuck about the dude. I swear, I know I know I know. Oh, Nux no. is like a Quebec guy, but yo, I I hate French. So Every much. time I go to that fucking city, Montreal, I I I'm completely. <laughs> I love this. I'm wasted out of my I'm here fucking mind every time in that city. Because there's well, nothing fun in Montreal. Okay, there's literally nothing fun oh, to do. Hey, no, hey, I love there's this. Just I'm fun in Montreal. You're fun in Montreal, me, but it's I like agree. every time I go there, it's like, oh, it's just shitty Toronto. Okay, whatever, dude. It's like off brand Toronto, cool. You guys are gonna get mega canceled <laughs> because the Quebecois are like the most bent motherfuckers. It's the most French thing that they could do is just like get offended all the fucking time. It's like get offended all you want, oh, but it's no. like it's boring as fuck over there there i'm wasted i was once told that there was like an invading army and the quebecois attacked like and they were all you know yelling their you know the french slurs are invaded you know Estucarles, tabernac, you know which is all essentially <laughs> right it's it's all um like religious utensils like tabernac that's the the tabernacle you know it's all they're all based on religious items so people thought they were zealots and just didn't want to fight with them yeah I, I, that makes sense that's a that's an excellent tactic by you know that's an excellent french tactic but my favorite is the block uh block quebecois oh the le uh, bloc quebecois yeah yeah le bloc Fucking quebecois hell. uh what's his name blanchette right i don't know i don't the, the, i don't the, follow the that who's closely. like on stage telling like uh telling a fucking first nation indigenous person in all sincerity that he's like, I understand you what you're going through because you know us as francophones, we have gone through the same. I love Canada politics. It's the only it, dude. Canadian politics is the best politics because if you live really closely, we're the only country technically that has ever had a prime minister do blackface and get away with it. Yep. True. And still run the country. True. As despite True. being I mean, left wing, does he really and run the behind, country? Yo, fucking. I guy's mean, known for being hot, isn't he? And yes. black knees. Like he, he just he did the full body. Uh, he did this. He did the. He did the Sarah one Silverman one like of like fucking cobalt black yeah, face. He's like doused himself. Yeah. I think the biggest difference between politics in the U.S. and politics in Canada. In the U.S., it actually matters, whereas in Canada, it does not matter at all. Dude, don't say that to the people in Alberta. They actually <laughs> want it. Dude, I guess so many people over there that are like, we need to vote in in terms of like prairie rights. I'm like, bro, there's like yeah, want to be Texas, want to be Texas ass motherfuckers in Alberta. They, they just <sighs> Like, it is. like you got you got Texas dudes who want to like fuck. even in Texas they don't want to fuck the uh, you know oil refineries. But hey, in Alberta, I feel like they, you're, you're gonna say that with Caleb here. He's the known oil. Fucker. I don't know nothing about oil refineries. <laughs> yeah, Caleb, were you a big oil man? And, no, Albertans like literally want to drink fracking juice. Yeah, I think like they unironically are just like like motherfuckers will wear like I love fracking shirts and shit like uh, that. They're just this wannabe Texas for, for yeah. I feel like Canada. when you got oil as your personality, you need to fucking step back a little bit. Like it's a little yeah. too much. We've got our own. Just, for a few years, Texans had uh, their own uh, their own power grid as their personality. Wait, really? What, what was oh, that? Yeah. What? Well, we have our own power grid. Texas has its own grid that oh, isn't okay. connected to like the rest of the United States. I think it's connected to the East, but. In February, when I first moved to Texas from Virginia, which is cold oh, yeah. as shit every winter, and it's normal, <laughs> it, power it was cold for two weeks, and there was no power oh. for two fucking weeks, and the world was over. And there's no, uh, there's also no plows for Texas roads. There's no plows. So wait, when wait, it snows when you, or when you ices, say snow in Texas, how many inches? How many centimeters are we talking? Three, like three inches of snow. Three okay. inches. All right. Yeah. Yeah, three. but the thing is, like. The thing is, you are used yeah. to it, right? In Canada, because it's like, you know, it, it just happens. It's normal. Yeah. 
if you shut the if world down in texas and it's not fucking normal everything collapses like rain in la yeah. you know what i mean yeah I, I i lived in miami when it rains uh, you know it fucks shit up because the rain is crazy right torrential downpour Dude, you know all these like insane fucking i, I went to la shit. for two days for my anthony padilla interview it rained one of the days oh that's the day i left I was in LA for two days. It, it rained that monday right the monday right after you left movie. yeah like literally it rained raining. as i was here yeah yeah it, it's the worst when it rains in la it's because it shuts everything down and it's a, like, a little bit of baby rain but what caleb's talking about with texas is, is crazy yeah, they refuse to be a part of the the normal grid that every Greg, fucking man. state is a part of because they don't want to sell like uh you know surplus uh, energy to any other state. Like they don't want to yeah. they don't want to rely on other states. But they, the real reason is because they don't want to like also you know help out other states. So they got absolutely cooked when everything mm -hmm. fell apart uh, because of uh, you know obviously weird weather conditions i wonder why that's happening remember ted cruz famously exited the state and went to cancun in I the know. midst of that i don't know if that you was like that. that was that was i was literally sitting in my house that i had just moved into the week before 35 degrees in my fucking house and i was like there's no wood stoves no one can drive for one they fucking yeah. suck at driving down here just in general but they suck at driving they're, they're, everywhere they're at 75 <laughs> dude I don't, I don't know the speed limit being 75 miles an hour really really uh and the Tech yeah. Express. Have you ever been on the Tech Expressway, Hassan? Yes, I have. Dude, it's like unlimited speed limit. It's oh, crazy. Oh, is it the Autobahn yeah. for the states? People have the craziest fucking cars, and they gun yeah. it. It's like it's like the it's American insane. Autobahn. Yeah. Man, I, I kind of want to rent Except, a car you know, and do that down there. That shit's it. epic, dude. Fuck. Yeah, it's crazy, though. It was so cold. It was and it, it was very cold, by the way. Like, it was extreme. It was like two degrees uh, Fahrenheit, under zero for th two weeks, something like that. It was, it was pretty bad. But... Yeah, uh, everything shut down within three days. I mean, so. if I if I had to live like that, man, I'd fucking I'd, I'd lose it. We I almost had that happen like a couple of years ago because we had like such a bad winter over here that like they gave a fucking warning. It's like if you leave outside, you're like it was like fucking some yeah. national nuclear bomb dropping on you. Warning, it's like ten minutes outside. I, okay, frozen. but your bad winter is like polar bears are yeah, attacking, that's, and it's that's like true. Six feet of <laughs> yeah, snow. that is true. Like we're true. all just skidding true. on the roads and yeah. shit. On a bad winter, we take sled dogs instead of cars to get around. Yeah, yeah it is. that's like that's that's warranted that it's like you're used to it, but it's like I get it. it I mean, it's like how Syracuse has like six months of oh. snow. It's fucking nuts. It's just insane. I hate that shit. That's why I live in. That's why I live in L.A., baby. That's, that's why you uh, got the better it weather. It sucks when it rains. You know, it's part of why I bought a house in in you know West Hollywood because the weather is just not the same anywhere else in L.A. West Hollywood is where the weather's the best. That's why he lives there. No, no, no. I, I will. I'm, I'm a comfy person. Like I, I, I'm exactly like Muda. I just, I scratch my balls. I wake up. You like, for this 10 is hours. what I know. You know. What I, I mean? listen. Yo, how do you I, stream for ten hours at a time? How do you have that? Like, yeah. How do you get that stamina? Ability? I couldn't do that. How do you that? do that? That stamina is insane. I just, I, I love it, dude. I'm a fucking freak. I, I enjoy it. Like I genuinely enjoy it. The worst part of the band wasn't like everyone was like, "Ha, oh, you got fucked." Cause you're crying because you're like. You couldn't stream uh, and you couldn't make money for something. He's like, first of all, it literally doesn't matter. Like, right, you're like seven money. day no off. Says, Fuck yeah, like, week off. Sounds cool in the beginning. Shit. No, I hated it. I hated it because I couldn't stream. I love streaming. Like, I just, I'm a fucking psycho. I, I legitimately enjoy doing this. That's why I could very easily dial it back. I could very easily do like, I don't know, fucking four hours a, a day. And I only stream, you know, and only stream five days a week, but I do seven days a week 10 to 11 hours because i truly this is what i like to do i don't like anything else this is what i enjoy Bad respect i have a question i have a question for a son so it circles back to tiktok right so tiktok there's a bunch of clips random shit always is popping up on tiktok i saw a clip okay and i think you i think you 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 mentioned it in, or you you reacted to it on your stream at one point but it's like i it has to be from pre-2016 okay and you look you, when I saw it, I was like, this is Hassan. I thought you were Steven Crowder for like five seconds. Straight up. Oh my God. Oh no. Straight up. And you were talking about Lady Gaga. Okay. And I, I was like, oh, what oh, the fuck, old. dude? What the fuck did I just watch? I couldn't believe it. And I looked at the comments and I was like, oh yeah, he watched this on a stream. And I was like, okay, whatever. But I, I want to hear your, and this was like a couple days ago. And oh, I, that, this was, was, that wasn't, that wasn't 2016, brother. That was like. 2014. 2014. Okay, yeah. yeah. Was like, it looked, you looked yeah. like you were 18 years old or something. I have no yeah, idea no, how old was, you are. But... I was like fucking fat. Yeah, no, I, I had <laughs> a. Like Steven Crowder. <laughs> it was so funny to me. I had a, like a older run where I wanted, I was like, 
way more. First of all, I was way more broy than I am now. I'm still yes. pretty broy now, but it was way more broy back then. And that I think that was like the one uh, area that my like political perspective, and this is something I'm very honest about. One area where my political perspective has changed dramatically is like trans rights, where I, I definitely, I think I was like making a joke about Lady Gaga being. Yeah. Like I was, I was and, and there were headlines I, too, because I looked it up. There was a bunch of headlines at the time too. So it was like a, it was a popular thing that was going yeah, yeah, on. It was, it, it was classic. It was a meme. You know what I mean? Right, I was exactly. Like, oh, lol, yeah. there's Lady Gaga, whatever. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I was just, uh, I was just trying to be funny. Exactly. It was, it was hacky. It, it was hacky. <laughs> it was bad. And, and I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to like, you know, gotcha you or anything no, like no, that, no. dude. But I, no, dude, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very open about that. Like, yeah, that, that's, not, that's what I assumed. I saw it. I, I was like, man, there, you have to have a hilarious perspective of this now because it's probably, it's probably like, you're not even looking at yourself. Cause I, when I was in 2014, yeah. I was like a fucking child, dude. I didn't even know yeah. what was going on. So, and yeah. then being like a, like a, uh, like an intellectual person who's, you know, been speaking on the internet since then, that must be very strange to see how much you've changed. And, and then the, the internet can just grab those clips and then just blow them up or, or whatever. I mean, yeah, the, the way I see it, and this is something I've talked about a lot, actually is a good point. Um, there's, there's two different kinds of like doing that thing, right. Where people, and this is something that people do all the time. Like they'll bring something old up and be like, this represents you. And it's like, well, right. it doesn't. It's like fucking right, of 10 years old almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not only that, but like, you know, it doesn't because you could literally ask me what my point of yeah, view is. Yeah, that's a disingenuous. And, and I could like, yeah. very easily describe to you uh, exactly why. But uh, that's, that's one thing I talk about regularly. The reason why, like, tr my trans audience, I have a pretty uh, sizable, you know, queer following. And the reason why none of them ever fucking feel phased by that at all is because... One, I'm very open about it. Uh, and two, I, I value people who have changed their perspective that, that right. used to have like even hateful yeah. attitudes on the internet. There's plenty of, I'm on Twitch. There's plenty of motherfuckers who back in like 2014, 2015 were probably like finding themselves in the midst of, you know, alt-right content who now look back at that with shame. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and for sure. They weren't public figures. And I never went that, I, I was never there obviously, but still like, yeah, I, I had different points of view. And, um, I think it's important to, uh, acknowledge that and, and change and, and move on. And people who fucking constantly bring that back to be like, this is you, like, what was that? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that was me. Yeah, exactly. It was viral on that side of, of TikTok. It appeared too. like all the comments were th like, I think the top comment maybe was someone saying that you've, you've watched it on stream or whatever and, and clarified. But, uh, yeah. most everybody was like, Oh, look at him. He's so fucking like, look out. He looks like. Steven Crowder <laughs> or whatever. I don't fucking yeah. know. Wish I did. I did. That was the <laughs> you worst did. part about I mean, it is that like, I look like Steven yeah. Crowder. I mean, hey. You look good. Like, it was worse, Steven than, Crowder, worse like, than the transphobia. Isn't he the biggest streamer on YouTube right now? Yeah, hell yeah. We got Steven Crowder. I think, I think Crowder. Steven Crowder is the biggest streamer yeah. on YouTube. Unfortunately, that is the, yes, that is the case. I'm pretty sure. I also have one more question. So this is another thing that's just fascinating to me. So it, from what I've read and from what I've heard, it, you, is your your uncle is part of the Young Turks, correct? My uncle is was the Young Turk at okay. some point when he was actually fucking young. Okay, and, right, right, right. Uh, is no longer young, but it still has right. the still maintains the name. But yes. Yeah. Okay, so now there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. I want to know your perspective. Like, I, I don't know if you like if you guys have like Thanksgiving dinners. I don't, but like the the we meme do. is like, yeah, we do, we do. He he comes on the show on Thanksgiving. Okay, that's actually really cool. So so Thanksgiving dinner. It's like a time where you, you communicate, like, w whatever, just random stuff, mo the most interesting stuff that's happened throughout the year, generally speaking. So when when your uncle had an interaction, I don't know where it was, but with Alex, Alex Jones, Jones, dude. Oh, I love that. I love <laughs> like, that bro, I couldn't, I can't, that, that clip, that video, and that time plays through my head on, like, a weekly basis. And I, I would love yeah. to hear what you like your opinion you, from your point of point of view of like that. I wish I was there. I was in LA at the time. <laughs> I was working at the Young Turks at the time, but I was in Los Angeles, like in Los Angeles. Oh I love that. God. It was I so mean, funny. Alex Jones. I think Alex Jones, if we were more educated as a nation or as a planet, and we were smarter, Alex Jones would be the greatest entertainer. Oh yeah, absolutely. Of, of, of yeah, like oh, one yeah. of the greatest entertainers yeah. of all time. You know, I mean, he's still a piece of shit. Don't get me wrong. But because people take him seriously and like literally go and like fucking harass Sandy Hook parents and shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and he knows that, and he still fucking heavily leans into that kind of like conspiracy bullshit, and people can't appreciate 
the the psycho the the psychotic nonsense that he like comes up with, mm-hmm. which I would consider sometimes even creative. Um, he's unfortunately too uh, too much for uh, Americans to handle because they take it seriously. But I'm fascinated with Alex Jones. I I he's done uh, videos on me when I originally got banned for my America Deserve 9/11 takes. Oh yeah, uh, true. Wait, that was a take, or was no, that just no, like I, I used to use uh, him? Was that a... so? What did you mean by that? I've I've clarified many times over, but I, you know. I remember when I came across that take. The America does like 9/11, and so like obviously it's it's a weird perspective. Like when you grow up as a Muslim in the country, like 9/11 is like completely different for you. Like even in Canada, right? Like oh yeah, when that whole event happened, yo. My teachers were looking at me like, are you sure you're not going to hijack a 747? I'm like, man, I'm not even like four <laughs> feet tall right now. I can't even reach the. I don't even know how to, I don't even know what you want me to do there. So it's like, it changes everything. So when you come up with that take, like what 9-11 did is like, I, in order to like cope with all of that, like with all the bullshit back then, I used to like literally read up the history of all of that, you know? So like, like by eighth, the FBI is making a call to Buddha. Like you're suspiciously looking into this 9/11. Oh no, much. my dad, dude, my dad was like scared shitless. Like in eighth grade, like I'm on the internet, like reading up about the Mujahideen, and my dad looks at me like, my no, like my dad walks in, he's like, son, what the fuck are you doing? You know they can kidnap me and send me to Guantanamo Bay, and I'm like, I'm sorry, dad, I just want to know about them. He's right though. You're yeah. straight up right that they did do that a lot. Oh, yeah. Luckily, God. you were in Canada. If you were Damn. in fucking oh, Dearborn, yeah, dude. dude, holy shit, your dad would have been fucking permanent prison. So, like, I'm looking up at the Mujahideen, and like, literally by like high school, eventually, like, when people keep bringing all that shit up, then I knew the full context. So, when I saw the Hassan clip, and he said that, like, obviously, it's easy to get inflammatory about that because, like, it is the way that it was worded. I mean, no shit, you were going to get banned mm-hmm. and shit for it. But then I look at the history, I'm like, I mean, hey, the CIA did train all these jackasses to blow shit up. I mean, goddamn, you can't just let the demon loose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, we we one hundred percent like it's not even a controversial like the obviously the way I word yeah. it is controversial, mm-hmm. but what I was implying or what I was talking about was blowback, which is uh, a a well established uh, uh, perspective that not a single historian or academic would disagree well, with. Well, yeah, you can't just, um, you can't, yeah. we, it wasn't we, even we the instigated it. It was more yeah. so. The, Certainly yeah. instigated it. Absolutely. You, you can't just yeah. unleash it's it. It's funny yeah. because like the 20th anniversary of 9-11, like all of those documentaries came out and then everyone was like, I remember even people that hadn't like reached out to me in years were like, oh shit, now I understand what the fuck you were talking about. Cause like every single yeah. fucking documentary talked about Operation Cyclone, fucking ronald reagan and and the ussr and and that's precisely what the fuck i was talking about when i was uh you know re- reacting to a video of dan crenshaw the american military industrial complex still greatly benefits from never-ending war you know that's what I my mean? favorite stock so to invest in. it's about who's benefiting the average american does not benefit from it because our military budget is expansive and, and insane so we can't get good roads or health care or good education but then we have like you know massive r&d costs for like a new way to <laughs> nuke someone uh, yeah basically a new way to fucking find uh, uh you know but new way to laser brown kids but you space, gotta admit you know? it's kind of cool and, that you fund the military so hard that i was reading this it was the best statistic apparently if america went to war with every country right now like 99 times out of 100 you'd still win <laughs> like you know that like if you went to war, they, there's no shot. That's not true. I mean, they they say that, but like that would never happen. I, I, even if America went to war with like, it just depends on which country we're going to war with. I'm sure but that also includes the nuclear arsenal nuclear. too. Like that's also what it includes. Oh, okay. Well, then that's different. Then the entire world would yeah. blow up. But yeah, if America went to war with like a serious uh, country, like if it was uh, you know, boots on the ground, fucking, yeah. boots on the ground military warfare, like our military and and um. I mean, it, it would just it would just depend on NATO. It would, it would, on it would probably go to France, it would probably go to nukes move. eventually at some point. Like if it got really France bad, and India. it would immediately go to nukes. Yeah, mutually assured. That's a, yeah. The the thing is, like, too, uh, with like Russia and China, when they go to war, everybody has to fight. Every single person has to fight and will fight. I mean, look at World War II, Russia. That literally ten million conscripts died. Farmers and fucking like people who were just they had to fight or they would lose or or you know, and they helped. Turn the tide of that, obviously, in the favor of the allies. But yeah, I mean, the, like with America, there's too much. There, there's a lot of freedom of choice. I think. I think the power. The power of our military is very. Uh, hopefully, will never have to be tested. Oh God, for my no. sake, because I'm prime military age. 
but no nah, dude <laughs> yeah, i don't want to fight dude, a fucking war whip out that long gun you have and just injure yourself they won't bring <laughs> you in hassan you gotta see this fucking pistol of his that's why they can't uh a, a japanese <laughs> uh a japanese emperor said that they they could never attack america's homeland because behind every blade of gra- grass there lies an american with a gun <laughs> I, I i still can't believe he has that fucking dude look at this americans thing. would get owned americans would get owned so fast dude. i know dude if i walked outside and there was like a fucking like regiment of russians with an apc and they saw me walk out with this thing waving it around <laughs> get off my land you fuckers they put a fucking 40 millimeter grenade through my yeah. chest <laughs> Dude, it's just like you get 762 <laughs> in your chest you're done <laughs> yeah it's just like half, half the half the american like militia defense force would shoot uh, it- itself in hey the man. foot before they even fucking got out because like all those tactic cool motherfuckers they play that, like, airsoft the, song, the weekend, come on. The weekend. they know their tactics all right all right all right listen to this I, so from where i'm from in virginia there's a lot i obviously i have a lot of i have a lot of firearms i enjoy guns a lot i think they're a lot of fun but i, I do as well I, I think guns are very fun i know a guy right hopefully this he doesn't see this because he'll be really mad at me if I tell everybody this but the gear that they have there's a lot of militias in, in virginia where i'm from they literally they literally wear colonial garb when they practice because oh, they I love they, that. they one the leader of the militia I has a powdered wig non-ironically i swear oh, to god I love it's that. fucking awesome and they were like we're training Muda, that's white culture baby all the heart Dude, disease yeah. what the fuck? and the it's so funny 800 well, like, nvgs you can buy off amazon <laughs> I think those dudes need, they deserve healthcare for the record. That's what I yeah. advocate for is like, I mean, obviously like those are Clean also, those arteries, man. they happen to be the dudes who keep telling me I'm a sand N word in my, in my DMS and like fucking, you know, telling me I, I hate America and I should uh, kill myself or they'll do it but for you're me advocating or whatever. For but, them. but despite all that, I think that, you know, if they had uh, a working sewage system, better roads, better <laughs> opportunities for, uh, you know, meaningful employment. They don't live uh, in the third care. world, man. <laughs> working sewage system. Bro. <laughs> Dude, what are you want talking them to about? Have food. What, what, no, we they, want them to be America like North Korea with food. Dude, dog, America 100% is a third world country with a Gucci belt. If you're rich, if you're upper middle class, it's a fucking theme park, okay? The world is your oyster. But if you're fucking poor in this country, like it's not Virginia because Virginia is West uh, Virginia. pretty wealthy. No. But West Virginia, dude, dude West Virginia, yeah. they have to fucking like literally come in with yeah. NGOs that work in African countries in the exact same capacity and literally close down fucking stadiums so they can do dental work on the people that live there. When you cross the state line from Virginia into West yeah. Virginia, it is literally like driving into a third. And people from West Virginia are like, that's just the east side. The west side's great. We got Cumberland Gap out here. We're near Ohio. It's a, it's, yeah. it's uh, like heaven. But uh, yeah. east, eastern West Virginia is fucking terrible. And yeah. everyone who doesn't think so is lying to themselves. When you cross the state line, it goes from being a paved road to a fucking paved road with holes in it and cracks. Yeah. It kind of feels that way every time I cross the border going from, like, U.S. to Canada also. <laughs> it's like you cross the border and there's oh. half the street lights and also all the roads are just full of potholes and cracks. Yeah, it's like the, the <laughs> Canada best, is not yeah. a third world uh, country, but the roads are so bad. Okay, it's a little opposite. Well, Canada's situation is a little different because of weather, yeah. obviously. Well, okay, it's no. not right when you cross the border. Okay, come on. Six feet isn't changing the weather that drastically. I know, I know. We shouldn't have brought potholes in front of Canadians. They fucking, they, they, they have the worst potholes in when Canada. When I go from Niagara Falls to fucking Buffalo, United States, like New York, land fucking nightmare difference between both it's like we got good shit in niagara falls canada and as soon as you go to buffalo i'm like man if i just make the wrong turn i'm getting fucking mugged and killed right now this is a fucked up place you go to michigan from here oh man fucking saddest place in the world ever in the u.s ohio fucking depressing as shit no matter what when i went to the state of ohio i'm like now i know why people do crack now i know why people are on heroin all the time here it makes fucking sense if I lived here, shit. 100%. 100%. I mean, if West Virginia is fucking absolutely destroyed by opiates. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's really destroyed. sad. Genuinely you know, like, sad. fentanyl is, like, the biggest and, killer. Yeah. You know, I want to I wanna solve all those problems for these motherfuckers, so it's, like, harder for them to... Like, I, I want to create an environment where no one wants to, you know, become... No one needs fentanyl, exactly. radical like No that. one needs, like, crazy shit. Yeah. It's also the problem, that, like you said, NGOs and stuff like that. It's very interesting how it does feel... like. There's a lot of communities that feel inaccessible 
like in in Virginia as well and West Virginia, mainly Southern Virginia, uh, which yeah. is you know bordering Kentucky and West Virginia. But like yeah, the obviously hollers, not. Northern Virginia is all fucking defense. That's where I live. Yeah, that's where and, I live. And DC folks, yeah. so it's like yeah. it's definitely a right. Lot yeah, there, there's an easy turnover. You go across Paris Mountain in Northern Virginia, and then it's all billionaires and wineries and shit, and then defense yeah. contracts, and then you go you go west of the of Paris Mountain, and then it's like okay, and then it's just like. A third world country, yeah, like, essentially, in West Virginia. It's like Vegas, yeah. dude. It's like you go off the strip once. <laughs> it, it, that is Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, you go yeah. off the strip once in Las Vegas, and it's just like, all right, boys, I think a bomb just fucking went off in this part of the country. Shit. And they get so mad at me for talking about West Virginia like that. They're like, it's beautiful out here. No, I'm sure it is. You know, right. look. It is beautiful. <laughs> it, yeah, it is it's beautiful. It's just like, it's just been like absolutely fucked over by yeah. uh, all of its leaders, all of the, the, gov- the local government. Mm-hmm. There's the, local it, yeah, the local government the local government the federal government too and it's like it's a still up and the more fucked up it gets the more fucking republican it gets it's a plus 35 red state you know what i mean this is a state that voted for donald trump but, but with a with a 35 point advantage like i want i want to you solve think he's that. gonna like, win in 2024 the, he's running well, again you he think he's gonna win in 2024 if he, runs, yeah. if he runs and he stops with this like uh pro vaccine nonsense yeah he'll win. yeah i saw that actually yeah, very strange. i actually saw the fucking thing where he like he went on and he was just like you know vaccines are the greatest invention by the u.s government i'm like whoa you can't just be saying that on facebook these moms are gonna go fucking yeah. age. <laughs> 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 it's, it's weird because like he wants to take credit yeah. for it and he, know, he should be able to he should be yeah. able to you know he was the leadership during uh a, a very swift uh you know r&d process that that truly created these like incredible fucking life-saving vaccines so he wants to take credit for that but then also at the same time his fucking fan base hates vaccines like he was anti-vaxxer he was the only anti-vaxxer like he was he had he was the only anti-vaxxer in 2016 on that stage that had said stuff like you know maybe uh the amount of vaccines that we're giving people is making kids autistic you know what i mean like he was he he had said shit like that in the past until he made a vaccine in his yeah. mind and greatest. now he's like no the vaccines are actually good and they are good but you know that's that's not great dude for, with the for, with uh, you know it, winning it's the tough election. on social media even getting out there like i think we're locking down once again in in here i think i don't know how it's like in montreal next but like fucking yep. here it's like we're yep. we're getting bad cases again obviously during the winter it always rises and shit caleb's like what's a lockdown yeah. dude i haven't what? seen a mask in six months <laughs> wait, wait, what is a dude, lockdown what, what, is that, what, caleb's like is that just like cool what, what time out mean? for you guys Everybody's like what normal. No, but like everybody's sick and they're like, just got the cold. Well, like, yeah, like here it's like we're getting like the <laughs> we're getting like the third like booster shot stuff. It's impossible to get a booster shot here because like fucking they put me on a wait list for like February. I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I'll just fuck off then. Oh yeah, by the yeah, it's because of us, baby. That's right, America. We have all the fucking vaccines and we won't even. That's what I'm saying. Them. So I'm coming. To, I'm coming down to Houston in like two weeks, right? So I'm gonna fly down there to Texas, and I'm wondering if I can just get the booster in Texas because like probably yeah, because it'll it'll just. Yeah. Yeah, there it'll be easy. surplus They're like nobody's fucking taking it come on mm-hmm. you 100 percent should do that <laughs> yeah, by the way. yeah it's uh, like instantaneous yeah there's no way if you have the capacity to fucking you know travel and be able to get a booster 100 percent do it because like we literally throw them out dude it's disgusting. medical tourism like come to america for medical tourism for the first time ever <laughs> they'll let a canadian do that shit do you think they'll fucking let me come in and just go into a pharmacy and just get oh, yeah, fucking dude. hit no doubt uh i i'm pretty sure you can just like walk in i mean i i had to i had to schedule just literally earlier today i'm i'm getting boosted soon but yeah you you should be yeah. able to walk in to many pharmacies because they yeah, have yeah. like so much surplus dude have you guys had it i've had covid you had covid you mean you get tested and had a positive oh. test yeah yeah no, no I, I've never had COVID. I have, yeah. When it got really cold, I had it. And uh, I took a test. It came back because I was like feeling a, like just a tiny bit weird or whatever. And my taste went away, which Ooh. is like what that's like the fucking. Oh, that's thing. Yeah, yep. GG's. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's so everyone's so cavalier about that. It's literally like your 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 nerves being annihilated by your own immune system, which isn't good. But fortunately, mine came back. But Coca-Cola tastes like gasoline now which is fucking weird because i love coke still now, to all this I day? Drink, still to this day all i drink is dr pepper no god bless texas but uh, <laughs> uh coca-cola fucking sucks now and i tr- i bought three different cases of it and i tasted it and every single one tastes like burnt like fuel or something like some kind of burnt fuel product other than that that's totally good i would i would die it, yeah it, it's it's really annoying because it, i mean nothing's better than the first sip of a good fucking 
glass oh, bottle of Coke. Man. I'm a DC boy myself. I love Diet <laughs> okay. Coke. That's why I'm <laughs> and, and Mountain glad Dew. I never fucking got it. Okay. Jesus Christ. No, Mountain Dew's fucking Mountain Yeah, Dew's I got it. Uh, my yeah. only symptom was fever. Like, I had fever for two days, and I then I was fine. Fever. Both my parents had it, too, and uh, they're they're fairly healthy. My dad's extremely active, uh, and he didn't even – his he didn't lose his taste. My mom lost her taste. My girlfriend had it. My cousin had it, and a couple of my friends it, had it. It's about the viral the load, too. It, it's about yeah. how big the we viral load is. Viral like, loads. you might have just, like, gotten really yeah. lucky and not gotten for it. For sure. But then also, on the other hand, the, the inconsistencies are, like, the antibodies that you actually uh, keep and develop. People always say like, oh, I got COVID, I don't need it anymore. But like, literally, it's not a 100% situation yeah. where like you right. have developed enough antibodies. So what people are now worried with, with the Omicron variant is that like, yes, it's like 10% weaker, they're, they're suspecting. But also, it's still really fucking bad for those who like may got may have gotten COVID like last year, but it mm -hmm. wasn't like super serious. And they haven't been boosted or they haven't even gotten like any vaccinations for that reason. And uh, it'll still be bad for someone like that. And hospitals will still uh, load up for people like that that are just like simply not protected. I had a cold or something a couple weeks ago. And uh, when I did have COVID the first time, um, my chest felt like uh, maybe one to five percent tighter than normal, which I do feel that way sometimes just from stress. And I was moving at the time. So I just uh, associated with that. But when I had this cold recently, it felt the exact same. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure if I just like got another little round of it or whatever. I didn't test because it wasn't bad and I don't leave my fucking house. So like the only time uh, I was scared yeah, shitless of getting anymore. COVID ever was like when I was in the fucking hospital getting my appendix fucking pulled out and they made me go through like three yeah. or four tests. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was a fun yeah. one. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I love when it comes to COVID, I'm only scared. Like my grandparents are both in their mid nineties. And my grandfather got COVID and like, he was fine. He's fine. You know, was he, was he vaxxed already? Uh, yeah. Uh, was he at that point? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know, but God damn, if he's 90 and he fucking survived COVID, he's invincible, dude. 95. That dude is a, you know, he's a Holocaust survivor. That dude's Jesus been fuck through the camps. The fuck. Yeah. What a badass. Yeah. That's he's crazy. a total badass. God damn. Yeah. Nothing can uh, get him. dude. I mean, Holy if he survived shit. that COVID's like, oh, whatever I'll do it. Fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he said. He literally said that to me. Yeah, respect. One of my friend's grandparents got it too, and she has COPD. And we were all like, "Oh shit, that's probably not fucking good at all." And this was in December of last year, so just pre-vax. And she got it, and they got she got tested, and the, uh, they asked her what it, what it felt like, and she said, "Feels like I got fucking COPD." <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but she's fine. I, uh, she didn't. Uh, I should, like you said, viral load. That that seems to be a major uh, uh, deterrent of like more severe. I, I really hope this shit's over soon, man. It's fucking ruining everything. Dude, traveling is insane because of it, dude. Even yeah. when I was down in California, like fucking. First off, I thought California was like super Canadian in terms of like all their mandates and shit. Bro, the amount of places I walked into where they didn't fucking check a no. goddamn vaccine receipt. No. They were like, masks? Oh, it's cool, bro. Just go and fucking eat, eat away. I'm yeah, like, dude, here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing. You feel that way because you watch fucking the internet. Like, you're, you're on social media. The only people that freak the fuck up, out about, like, the COVID restrictions are either, like, the mega liberal people or the very conservative people who are, I mean, or just conservatives in general, in my opinion. I think they, like... They, they pump this shit up in the news. But, like, the reality is all those people that fucking lose their minds about, like, mask mandates and shit, like, if you live in a red state, and Caleb can attest to this, you just don't have anything, right? You're fine. Yeah. You're just, like, maybe if you go to Austin, some of the places might make you wear yeah. a mask. But, like, other than that, nobody gives a shit. Employees if you don't live in a blue mask. state like California, in a lot of places, they don't give a shit either. But, like, let's say you're in Los Angeles where they do give a shit. The only thing you need to do is, what, like, wear a mask for 35 seconds? From the hostess table to your fucking table at Applebee's, like, what is that? Is that it? The way conservatives operate and the the way that they lose their fucking shit over mask mandates and shit like that is insane. It's just like, dude, it's Hassan, it's not Hassan, well, that I don't serious You're of a burden. You're taking away people's freedom, bro. They're oh, yeah, what are you doing? God. Yeah. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't. How am I supposed to know if a baby's smiling if they're smothering it with a mask? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just like I'm. I'm authoritarian as shit, and so America has been very authoritarian in the past as well. Like you know, when it comes to to, to instances of the public good, like I straight up am. Uh, you know, I don't give a fuck. Like I, I think the ma the vaccine mandates should have started way earlier, and even then, we still. You know, we, we fucked it up big time. I mean, we were number one and like vaccinated in the entire world when no one else had vaccines. And now we're, 
I don't know where the fuck we're at, but like our vaccine rate is is dog shit. I don't know when it, when it comes to mandates. There, there's some wacky mandates, even when, like, um, I know that in New York, there's, like, if someone gets COVID, they have to be in lockdown for 10 days, right? But if if you're a health worker, then you only need to be locked down for five days, and then you can go back to work, which makes no sense to me, because if it's 10 days of contagion, then if you're a healthcare worker, then you should definitely, I mean... No. The reason why they do that is because, like, there's such a fucking, like, it, the, the systems are so stressed. And and they just have they don't have enough fucking healthcare workers. A lot of them are fucking quitting too, because it's dog shit. Like I, I have so many. I have a lot of nurse friends. I you know I I uh, you know talk to some of the the you know nurse union people too. Like it's just nuts. Depending on what area you live in, like you know you got fucking ER rooms like back the fuck out. You know what I mean? You have the ERs like back the fuck up all the way into the hallways and shit. And they're, they're, still they're like treating that. it like it it's a like fucking war zone. It was like that in the beginning zone. of COVID. I don't think it's still like that. <laughs> dude, no, dude, it depends. If you have a fucking, if you have a spike, it is like that. It's not. I, I like, know. It depends on where you are. I know when are. I was getting my appendix thing, uh, we have like, I actually went to like a small town hospital for all of that because the bigger hospital we had, like in my city, was fucking packed. Like they were just like, people were literally to the front lines because they were like the front door even. They had like tents outside the hospital. So like, when my dad was dropping me off, he looked at the hospital and we'll just go like a town over and drop you off or like it has people, but like, <laughs> you know, you can get in, right? Like yeah. <laughs> in America, you can't do that though, because our rural hospital system is dog shit even before COVID. Like mm-hmm. even before COVID, if you go to a rural area, like there are places, there are entire counties in this country that exclusively rely on EMS services, like EMTs dude. to for their healthcare, yeah. dude. I have or they go perfect... to their fucking pharmacist for healthcare. Like there, there isn't yeah. a fucking hospital in like a thirty mile radius. The fuck, what, what the fuck's that guy supposed to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's nuts. And this is before COVID. Yeah, I was just about to say uh, it, during COVID, there's like been some some uh, some advancement with the local medical system here where I live, where I just moved to. You can now sign up forty dollars a year for a private ho- uh, for a private. Um, uh, helicopter transport, medical transport to the nearest hospital, which what? is in Fort Worth, which is like fucking an hour and a half. What? Away. So, yeah. uh, with, there are hospitals that are closer, but like, if you have something, if you are going to die, you're not, you're going to die if you go to the local hospitals. So there, there literally now is like a $40 a year. This guy just has a helicopter and he's like, sure, whatever, pay me 40 bucks a year. I'll, I'll drive you. It's free or, or 40 bucks a year. That's what it'll cost, which is pretty cool, but it's kind of a, uh, you know, like a glaring view into just the uh, local incompetence of I, I don't want to get in a car accident or something down here on these 75 mile an hour roads because I'll probably fucking die if I if I'm severely injured. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I said it's a third world country with a Gucci belt. Like there, America has some serious fucking issues and we just refuse to solve them because everybody's focused on like teaching kids CRT in schools or whatever the fuck people are yelling about on any given basis or again, well, see, uh, like yeah. uh, wearing a mask at a fucking uh, uh, wearing a mask at a restaurant. It's like. Bitch, you've never worn a mask. Shut the fuck up. If you live in a red state, stop crying about what the fuck's going on in California with respect to wearing masks. And if you're a Republican or if you're like an anti-masker in California, double shut the fuck up. You literally just have to wear the mask for 30 seconds. That's what you're complaining about. 30 seconds of my rights being. It's bullshit, too. It's like, it's bullshit. Like what? Are we are we not spreading COVID when we sit down at the table? Like, well, of course we are. You know how many like, restaurants? Uh, dance so many restaurants play. I go into to get theme. drunk. Like, I, I, I mean, I get wasted with the homies every once in a while. So, like, we go to restaurants and shit, and like they make us wear the mask. We sit down. I'm like, bro, it's a packed restaurant. Like, there's literally like like it's fucking bumper yeah. to bumper motherfuckers sitting there getting wasted. And I'm like, oh, we're not spreading today. I see. Okay, sure, why not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's so yeah. stupid. Like I, I recognize that it's stupid, yeah. but we do a lot of stupid shit. It's just security theater. It's no different than like the TSA security theater that you have to go. I through, love the TSA, uh, man. On, I, on I really do. Team. Those guys are my best friends. Every time I fly out into the states, I fucking, oh I, I unironically listen. <laughs> like I unironically absolutely love the Transport and Safety Administration because it's like you get a bunch. You you had the lowest rung of the federal <laughs> enforcement ladder. It literally, it's look. Okay, this is how it's yeah. like. You got TSA. Mall cops. No, you have TSA. You have like the Smithsonian janitor. You have like you know fucking park ranger. <laughs> all right, and, like that. That's where the TSA. They're that low. So it's like when you're getting paid yeah, shit, yeah. and you're like you literally are like lower than a fucking USPS worker in the fucking like 
you know, <laughs> in the federal road. Yeah, you're going to yeah. get mad. Like, this guy motherfucking comes at me. It's like, uh, sir, you got to make sure you take your laptop out. You got to, like, unbag everything. You got to make sure you put your shoes there. And I'm like, sure, let's go for it. And then, look, I surprisingly always get randomly screened. You know, it's like, sir, can you step aside? We got to check. And you know, I'm okay with it. Like, you know, fucking, I told you guys earlier before this started, it helps me get through security faster, okay? Like, they... They either tell me to like fucking they're either going to search me or they get like a special officer to come and feel my balls up. But that puts me in a different line. OK, so TSA gets to fondle my nuts, but I get through all of the security faster than ninety nine percent. He doesn't have clear. He doesn't have clear. He doesn't have TSA pre-check. He doesn't <laughs> Look, need it. I literally can't get TSA with the amount of checks that I have. Like, how do you get pre-checked? Like, it's like I swear <laughs> at Toronto Pearson, there's like a fucking TSA agent. Like there's a U.S. marshal that's like that guy walks in. I am fondling his balls. That's what he looks forward to every day. Like every time I fly, it's like <laughs> yeah. I get to fondle that dude's nutsack every time he flies in. So I'm gonna like drag him across. Yeah, he's, he's thinking about ball. it all. Yeah. Day. It's always a god. He's literally a ball. And the best TSA. Yeah, it's fucking named John under that. Ball but that's fondler, the best part. His little subtext. That's the best part about the TSA. Like I don't even have like like initially I hated it. The TSA out there, they're all playing rock paper scissors. Who gets to fondle mood as dude? Initially, today. I used to be like, man, fuck the Transport and Safety Administration, and now I'm like, you know, I get it. I'd be fucking angry too. I, if I if I had to live the TSA life, I'd be fucking fondling balls every day too. I wouldn't think twice about it. I'd be like, sir, step aside. You would sign up for the ball fondling. I would position? absolutely. That's the most. <laughs> that is the most. Resident ball listen, fondler. that is the most exciting fucking part of doing the TSA. Okay, no one goes to the TSA and has a good day. At Pearson International, there's literally three officers that are running through. Like, they have, like, 90 empty fucking boots and maybe three agents working there, okay? And their entire day, they have to ask the question. I literally, I get this asked all the time. It's like, sir, what are you coming to the U.S. for? Personal or business? Personal. Uh, where are you going to be going into the U.S.? And I give them the state. And sometimes they're so bold. They're like, are you bringing any guns, drugs, explosives, potential paraphernalia into the country? And, like, every time, like, has anybody ever said yes to that? Like, have well, you ever? They, they just ask, sarcastically. I think, well, yeah. have you, yeah. I think they ask everyone the same question. No, like, no, no. They that question. Oh, trust me. They, they, I, get I, that, I, I get that question every single time I travel. Listen, they, I'm 7% Lebanese. I've never been. Had never they had might, my They fondled. might ask okay, you I, that I, question, I haven't nuts. had my balls fondled. They may, I've gotten the question. Any sharp object. No, no, but like they out. ask you the question, but unlike in my situation, they don't think that I have a fucking satchel charge in my carry on. You know, they're like in their head, they're like, "All right, I I only get the gunpowder residue on every time. Like oh, every yeah. time I'm in, Shooting I range. always get gunpowder residue or whatever the fucking residue. They like you know dab yeah. my hands up. He's been shooting guns. Arrest him. Find those balls. Sort of irrelevant segue. I hate Pearson. I think it's my least favorite airport I've ever been in. I fucking hate it too. I hate most airports. They have carpeted honestly. floors. You have, you're dragging suitcases on carpeted floors. That is Why such a fucking first world problem. Holy shit. <laughs> but it's God. so stupid. Yeah. It's so dumb. Have you ever Why been would to the, they at do least you guys that? Have, have, you, have you ever. Go to an airport in West <laughs> Virginia. I was talking about LAX earlier. <laughs> it's monkey bars. LAX. LA dude, is LAX so is the worst fucking airport to ever be conceived. It's this the is the best part really? about the LAX. LAX. No, let me. Let me tell you have you ever been on a connecting flight into the lax no i have not oh this is the best part so i had a flight to fucking melbourne so like they fly me in the morning to los angeles international and like i thought the connecting flight would be like oh you just walk down this fucking hallway and you go to like the next no, no. you leave lax you go back through the security terminal and fucking oh my god the best part about australian transit is for some reason some dumb fucking melbourne thought the smartest thing to do was to have like a 20 minute window between leaving the LAX, going through security again, and jumping onto a fucking plane. So every time you do the song and dance, they always have, like, one Australian, like, fucking, like, agent coming down. They're like, uh, yeah, we're fucking stupid. You know, we're pretty R-worded right now. Come with us this way. Go through security and have a good time. That's how bad L It's the most stressful travel experience if you ever have to connect anywhere. It's so terrible. Traffic is always backed up. They've, they, they have not figured out, like, how to... I don't know if they like time it. I, I've never been to LAX where like there was no, you know, waiting time. Like I've never, I've never seen a, I've never had an LAX experience where there's just like no one uh, there. You Dude, know what I mean? Dude, my one weekend, yeah. And, and then I land in fucking Oklahoma and it's like, there's eight <laughs> people at the airport. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, here? I had one, the one weekend I had in Los Angeles, I had like nearly two crackhead attacks on me. Like fucking literal, like it's both in West Wall Hollywood. So this is the first part. So like I'm fucking going to a CVS pharmacy to get some shit. This guy's playing Minecraft on the side of a 7-Eleven. Like we're talking tans, everything. Like it's a fucking colony set up. And it's really depressing, right? Oh, like right. it's like, 
it, Los Angeles is yeah. where you do see like the big chunk of the homeless population. Because in Canada, if you try to be homeless in the winter, you're fucking dead. Like cause you're 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 gone. In California, yeah. it's like oh shit, the weather's fucking great year round. Fucking stay here. So. I, I had this one stare off with like one guy because I was like looking at him and he's like, when somebody looks at you, it's like a Pokemon encounter, right? Like you got to fucking look right back and you got to like, <laughs> you got to like stare him down. Music starts the playing. Mo- Dude, Wait, this motherfucker oh, like weird. has his strut near me, like starts walking. That's how I know you're Canadian, bro. That's like, that <laughs> don't make eye contact. Most- <laughs> yeah, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, no, most people just like r- don't look in the direction of a homeless person because they don't want to like you know they don't want to have an altercation or an interaction i was just like gonna that. say like I, I just didn't know what to do and then the second one was outside the fucking airbnb in in, in west hollywood so like i drive in to, to like where i'm staying this like fucking one place and stand at seth rogan's house it, i no, it was actually the same street <laughs> that jake paul lived at when jake paul got fucking absolutely oh, okay. like rammed through by the fucking city same street so i, I stay in this one place I drive in and there's this like figure in the distance, like by the front door of the fucking mansion. And I'm like, wait, is this like some other person trying to meet me? You know what I mean? Like, is this like an SCP? Well, I thought it was like some other like because it was a VidCon weekend. So I was like, maybe somebody's like outside my front door. They want to meet. I'm like, that's kind of cool. So we're pulling into this driveway. That is not cool, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I, no, like I thought it. No, listen, I thought it was somebody there. Okay, I thought maybe somebody wanted to meet up at Impromptu night. Impromptu meet up. Because I dark. gave up the address on like the Twitter DM. So I'm like, ah, oh, somebody will show up. So I like pull in and this guy's like fucking half naked, like pants are gone, washing his asshole on the fucking front door. And like, you know, it's one of those situations where I'm like in the car. I'm like having the death stare at him. Like, I'm like, you're going to leave the house. You're going to do something. And, like, this guy has to stare off with me, and he's just washing his ass for the next five minutes, and then immediately, without a second thought, darts out into the fucking night. And I'm like, dude, this is the fucking Los Angeles, West Hollywood experience. Best part is, the front door on that mansion was unlocked, so I was so stressed out the entire time. I'm like, in the five minutes, either he runs out into the middle of nowhere, or he runs inside this fucking property and starts shitting up the entire area. I'm like one or the other. I'm getting screwed, but like, yeah, that was that was my experience, man. That was that was a fun time. I'll never actually relive it again unless I go to that same neighborhood. Well, the thing that the thing that sucks about that is like, it, it, it's it's straight up. It, it's first of all, it's insane because like the area that you're talking about is a very wealthy oh, yeah. neighborhood, right? And and you have just fucking tent cities everywhere it's depressing man like and yeah part of it is part of it is because yeah like you said the weather conditions permit it but also the other problem is because homelessness empirically is caused by uh people being priced out of the housing market like that's where the starting point of homelessness is where you have a fucking job but you're still like living out of your car and you're trying to make ends meet or you're couch surfing and then you move over to your car if you have one and then you finally get to the last stage of homelessness that you see when people are just like living in a tent city and they are they're 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 under so much trauma and they fucking lose their minds they're doing drugs to cope with that they're self medicating and and they become addicts as well as a consequence of that and then the homeless shelters are unsafe and also on top of that they won't let you bring your dog in uh or they won't let you bring your uh, items in and that's a huge part of like being a human being we don't really think about homeless people as human beings for the most part so it's like hard to describe because you're like well they have trash it's like well so do we motherfucker we all live in trash right the liberal solution to this is not to address the underlying problems and like create public housing or have a housing first approach to homelessness the liberal solution is just like look the other way when they're eating trash and let them live on the fucking streets and then the conservative solution is like you know purge them purge them from the streets like fucking push them either to a like a way far away from like the eyes of the wealthy or just fucking, I don't know, throw them in jail uh, over and over again. Put them. It's, it's just such a weird sight though. Cause like you're right. It is an incredibly wealthy dude outside the place. The one car sitting on the side of the, like parked on the road is a fucking $250,000 car. Like it's a $250,000 Porsche that's parked out there in what, like, yeah, that's how rich the neighborhood. And it's like fucking loaded with these people who are running around at night trying to like siphon water. Yeah, but they're not supposed to be in the poor neighborhoods. Part that. of the reason why there's not that many homeless people in poorer neighborhoods, though, unless it's like, you know, Skid Row where it's like a designated homelessness area almost. But part of the reason why there, uh, there are more homeless people in rich neighborhoods is because like, you know, they, they just there's nowhere to go. There's no housing. There's no affordable units or anything like that. 
There's nothing that these uh, Dude, we're, kind, we're kind of getting that here they too because like the houses in Toronto are so fucking insanely expensive. Like you want to get yourself like a you want to get yourself a small house, like a decent house, like a starter one. Fucking, you're getting up to like eight hundred thousand dollars. Like who the fuck has that fucking lying around? You know, not not anyone I know. Eight hundred thousand is 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 nothing for the housing prices yeah, here. Well, that, <laughs> if you want a house that, in. That's why Hollywood, when I saw like know, your you're mansion gonna... in West Hollywood and they were like Hassan lives in a three million dollar house or like your mansion, I'm like three million dollars in West Hollywood. That's like that's ha- you know it's like the average price. It's like a it's like a it's a relatively <laughs> yeah. large house, but it's how many square feet? Three thousand eight hundred. Okay, like it's like a normal it's like a smaller Texas home, I think. So I guess I guess before we end things off, we have to ask Hassan because you know you are obviously the richest Twitch uh, streamer that we've ever heard of based on what I've seen on Reddit and Twitter. How many NFTs mm-hmm. have you been investing into, my friend? Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's so funny. I just I apparently I have other NFTs of me out there because like obviously it's a fucking insane system where the people just are like yeah i i have ownership of this now and i'm selling it to other people i don't think any of them have like popped do you remember that anything, twitch that but, twitch nft shit where like they would take clips of twitch streamers yeah. and just sell them without even telling you yeah there, people probably have done that with you and everyone else that i've probably fucked miskiff covered that the when it happened are you invested in any hassan what no no, no Dude, I don't even have a credit scripts. card. Come on, man, you're not looking. At... I don't have a. I don't have a credit card. Even like I barely. You could buy a, a few Board Apes um, Yacht Club fucking NFTs. Come on, you could buy one of those apes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot. You of You could money. buy the it's apes. Not like a secret, it's obviously. a smart investment, dude. Three hundred thousand dollars for a. You should create a crypto Twitter account. So I fucking hate those. You know how much money those fucking accounts <laughs> make, so though. Stupid. You know how much back when I was doing the Save the Kids shit. Yeah. Sam Pepper, who gets like maybe three likes on Twitter, dude. One of them being him, bro. I can't stand that guy. I, Trust me, no yeah. one can stand Sam Pepper. Like when that motherfucker yeah. reached out to me, I was like, I like laughed inside. I'm like, this motherfucker. Like, the funny thing is, everyone in that situation is like, I'm not the bad guy. I swear to God, I'm not bad. Everyone else is. I'm actually like, he is no, the like, bad you're guy. Fucking pretty. Like he is definitely Dude, a bad I, one. Yeah. But like, I joined one of his WhatsApps out of curiosity when he was doing like the pump and dump scams. The dude is literally to a T. If I would have recorded it, I should have recorded it because it, it was like. It was 100% a absolute scam that was he wasn't even trying to hide it at all within the WhatsApp. And like people who would say anything would just get fucking immediately just axed. And this was right before the Save the Kids thing um, over you know, the it's, summer. It's funny to me like how you can you can be in that situation and still feel like you should scam the audience. You know, it's like we're yeah, it's fucking like, weird. dude. I, I think. It's so. Scummy. I think in my situation, like we have money, like obviously we don't like. I don't think. I think it's like you don't want to scam your audience and like fucking. What are you gonna get out of it? Like the long term repercussions are way fucking worse. Like it's just you have a bad image on the internet. You're potentially in trouble with the fucking government. Obviously, like I don't know. Like it's it's so scummy in that situation. I don't understand why people like. W- what do you need? Like what I see, like celebrities getting in on it too, and I'm just like. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Like, do you not have enough money that you have to like milk your fucking fan base? It's like Soldier Boy, man. Like, if you follow Soldier Boy's Twitter account, fucking the best place to find all the scam content in the world. That motherfucker, he's awesome, dude. That motherfucker is promoting the most brain dead metaverse. This metaverse shit drives me insane. Like, all these people acting like fucking this metaverse is a new concept, brother. We've had MMOs. We've had all this shit for a long. We've had Habbo Hotel. We've had. We've had Habbo Hotel with financial scams, okay? We've had all this. VR yeah, chat. We have all these metaverses. Yeah. And then these these NFT bros are always like, this is some new shit. You can live in a metaverse. I'm like, first off, you have to have an actual property in real life to live, right? We're not pod people. So it's like your idea of like an investment is building a fucking digital mansion and storing your digital board apes yachts all over the fucking wall. Like how fucking sad that is. The, that is a cyberpunk reality. OK, that's like literally shit you would see in fucking Blade Runner. And we're touting that as like, I'm not going to be a part of that. Fuck. No, that is absolutely terrible. <laughs> but listen, it's what I say all the time when I make videos like that. It's like we live in a time where financial uncertainty is really at its peak. Right. Like obviously so many people have lost their jobs because of coronavirus and like just these lockdowns that we've had in general. Right. So it's like, everyone's trying, like, this is what, this always burns me. Like, how much do you need? Right. How much money do you need to be really happy in life? I'm comfortable where I am at in life. I don't need any money extra. I like, literally, I don't care. Like it's not the end of the world, but like these guys are always out there siphoning hundreds of thousands, sometimes 50,000 from like their fans. But what do you fucking get out of that at the end? You're siphoning 50 grand from people who need the rent money 
Otherwise, they end up homeless. Otherwise, they end up without food. It is like the purest version of just screwing over the... It's punching down to like the greatest, most distilled way uh, throughout like, history. Like you are only taking advantage of the people who have the dude, most to Dude, Jake lose. Paul gets into a fucking and bullshit boxing fight. Jake Paul gets into a bullshit yeah. boxing fight that like... First off, I, don't, I, I can't watch a Jake Paul boxing event because they're boring as fucking shit. But like he gets into a fight event. He probably makes millions off those fights. And then he's still promoting mm -hmm. shit like stick dicks. NFT projects. Yeah, dude. Hassan, have you seen Stick Dick? Have you seen the Stick Dicks? What the fuck is the Stick Dick? Oh, man. <laughs> it's a what? stick. It's okay, a stick right. character. I'm going to. It's a stick I, character, and he's got I don't know if out. I can I can show this on here, but like, I'm going to send you this fucking link. Yeah, we might get sued. Yeah, if we yeah. The fucking I don't, I know, I don't, don't take any screenshots. Yeah, I don't want to screenshot it. Yeah, don't, don't screenshot it. I don't want to screenshot You go to jail. Shit, but like, That's um, basically feeding. You know, the, the scariest part about this reality is that, like, value and its protection is oftentimes. I mean, it's like it's like land, okay? There was a time when. We didn't have enclosures and land was seen. All land was seen as, you know, public for the public good. Right. And then enclosures came in. We're going way back in the day. Right. Um, and then how did that become a, a normal part of our lives? Well, there was a protective mechanism. There was a regulatory force that decided, no, that that land is actually uh, uh, owned by this Lord. Right. The, and, and what I fear might happen in the future if NFTs and if all this shit actually reaches like terminal velocity, if it finally gets to like mass usage, I worry that the regulatory forces that control it are, are basically, if there's enough people making money and the right kinds of people making money out of it, yeah, governments are going to start saying, no, actually, you can't screenshot a fucking NFT. You do have to pay to see a fucking GIF. You do have to uh, do all this shit. And it, it sucks because it completely betrays the, uh, the the uh, free principles uh, that the internet was built on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the original internet uh, was was uh, actually a libertarian utopia. And I don't mean libertarian in like the American ANCAP way. I mean libertarian in the European sense, like left libertarian, a, a free anarchist uh, uh, platform was what the internet was supposed to be. Liberties above all else. Yeah, and it was it was like that. And obviously that doesn't mean there shouldn't be any sort of control. Obviously there needs to be regulatory mechanisms, but it fucking sucks that it's going to change know, when you have the value is just value. Like you're gonna, there Dinerity. needs to be something controlling it. And if, if we get to a point, like I could totally see the government being like, no, you can't fucking screenshot. I mean, like you could get DMCA. If it, if for it does get NFT. to that point, I mean, it's just essentially what copyright is on YouTube to the nth degree. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is dog shit. Yeah, right? yeah it's, I mean, it's horrible. It's fucking dog shit. I hate copyright. How many times do we get our videos claimed on a daily? Well, audience, I think we'll probably tie it off. We got like an hour forty minutes into this. I'm sure Tara's gonna fucking kill us if we go any longer. But <laughs> <laughs> she'll be all right. She's French Canadian, by the way, guys. You got oh, I fucking I love I love Montreal. It's the fucking greatest city. Man. Yeah, she's French Canadian. Poutine is great. Yeah, I love I, I love Blanchette. I love uh, <laughs> Quebecois forever. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in, and thank you, Hassan, for being here. If you want to plug things in before we tie off, feel free. I'm live every day unless I'm banned. Uh, at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi and you know I post memes on Instagram at Hassan D. Piker and uh, I tweet literally nonstop at Hassan the Hunt. If you guys like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, dislike it if you dislike it. Follow uh, me, Nux and Umpi, and Hassan. We are out.